Many things can take our dreams from us, and I promise this video won't be all gloom and doom. It actually does have a happy ending, but I have to start from the very beginning. So my name is Kit, and I'm diagnosed with something called schizoaffective disorder, which means that I experience symptoms of schizophrenia, such as delusions and hallucinations, but also symptoms of a mood disorder, such as bipolar or major depression. But way, way, way before I was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, I was seven years old and dreaming of becoming a plastic surgeon. I wanted to do trips with this organization called Operation Smile, and they're a free surgical charity that works to fix cleft lip and palates in kids in developing countries that otherwise wouldn't have access to that kind of medical care. And honestly, Operation Smile shaped the majority of my life up until I was like 25 years old. And as I grew up, that dream fueled everything I did. I started shadowing surgeons when I was in high school, and all the while I made sure to keep my grades up so that I could get into a top university, which I did. And when I got to college, naturally, I made a beeline towards the local chapter of Operation Smile. And as quick as I could, I dove into leadership positions. And it was because of the connections with that club that I was able to go to the International Student Leadership Conferences for Operation Smile. The first one was in San Diego, California, and the second one was in Rome. And in Rome, I also had an extra training that I was able to be accepted for that prepared me to go on a medical mission trip, which I later did do in 2017. I went to the Philippines. And trust me when I say I had a great time, it was the closest I'd ever been to my dream, like ever. The actual co-founder of Operation Smile was there. I got to shadow him, interview him, all of that kind of stuff that was just, ugh, it was just wild to me. And I was also able to have something called Balut, which is a local Filipino delicacy with the celebrity guest on our mission. And if you're wondering who it was, it was Zachary Levi. He's a great person. I'm not just saying that because this is a YouTube video, but he's genuinely a great person. And I had a good time with him. And like, that was just like, ugh, it was mind blowing to me that I was that close to what I wanted to do with my life. But anyways, back at college, I was doing research on DNA and RNA sequencing to observe the effect of climate change on plants. This would go on to be a failed attempt at getting my name on a scientific paper, but a successful attempt in teaching me the importance of perseverance in all things. And speaking of perseverance, I was slogging through the increasingly more severe sides of my illness. My grades were getting harder and harder to keep up. I passed exams, but sometimes that's all I did. It was hard for me to study when I was manic. It was hard to get out of bed when I was depressed. And it's really hard to take an exam when your anxiety has you throwing up in the trash can outside the lecture hall five minutes before the exam is supposed to start. I lacked balance in all things. I was always either up or down. There was no in between. And the thing is, I wasn't properly medicated and I didn't even know it. But because of this, I was always in some kind of episode and the cognitive side of my illness was starting to rear its ugly head. My memory was getting worse and worse with each episode and I could feel a decline. I started suffering from issues with my working memory, which really just made it hard for me to solve multi-step problems and take lecture notes. Because of this, I couldn't do the math that was required in physics, and also any auditory information just went in one ear and out the other in all of my courses. I had major issues with auditory processing. I actually had to medically drop classes my senior year due to a very bad mixed mood episode, and those last two semesters were the hardest. And the thing is, I actually did graduate college. I have a degree in biology with a concentration in chemistry and a minor in art history. But overall, I left university feeling lucky to be alive. But I was also starting to get the feeling that if I could barely make it through undergrad, how would I really get through medical school? Especially since my episodes were getting worse and not better. But I ignored that feeling, that little inkling that maybe I couldn't do it for years. So naturally it took me a little while to realize that maybe being a doctor wasn't in the cards. I literally had to move to New York City for a year, have a full psychotic break, get kicked out of my apartment, move all the way back home, do a year of intensive dialectical behavior therapy, all to finally realize, oh, and I forgot I got hospitalized, for me to realize that maybe I shouldn't be a doctor after all. And the reason is, I'll just say it, it's because of my schizoaffective disorder. I will never be a doctor, ever. Wow, scary word, never say never, that's what I always hear. But honestly, I'm gonna say it, I will never be a doctor. And honestly, I think that's okay. Because the thing is, even if I survive the classes and the exams at first, eventually the stress will get to me. Stress triggers my episodes, I'll have an episode and 
then I'll lose it all. I'll fail out. And that's assuming I can even get in. That's assuming I pass the MCAT. Because even one episode is enough to damage my brain further. And given my doctor once described manic episodes to me akin to concussions, I'm not exactly keen on risking it. It's just not worth it when the chances of that happening are too high. And so one night, I just let go. I let go of all of it. The dream of being a doctor, the dream of working with Operation Smile, of traveling the world and doing surgeries, I just let it all go. I just sat on my bed, accepted it, and let it leave. And honestly, it leaving felt like something tangible. Had been torn out is the wrong word, cut off, wrong word. But just like, I just feel like a part of my, my heart left me then, just a little bit. I hugged my giant stuffed bee and uh, we cried and cried and cried. And so those experiences, the shadowing, the trips, the conferences, the clubs, the exams, everything kind of started feeling like a relic from a past life. But I really value what happened to me because of that dream. I'm really glad that I chased it for as long as I did. I'm really glad that I got to experience those things. But I still value what happened because of that dream, and I'm really glad that I participated in it. I value that I was able to go on an Operation Smile trip at all, because I'll never get that opportunity again. I value all the hundreds of hours of shadowing I've done just to see what it's like in an OR. And I value the hard work that I did for my degree and my research. I value all of it. Really, I do. It's just that being a doctor wasn't meant to be. But this is where it gets better. Because in hindsight, letting go of that dream was actually one of the best things that could have happened to me. I feared for so many years that without that dream, I would lose myself. But in the end, it was actually the reverse that was true. In losing the dream, I found myself. I built my entire life around that dream to the point where I thought that if I wasn't to achieve it, then it wouldn't be a life worth living. I thought that I'd be useless to the universe if I couldn't go to medical school. And my obsession with being a doctor had become who I was. It had become my identity. So without it, I had to figure out who I was underneath all of that. And I'm alive, which is the most important detail. But who could I be? Who could I grow into? Well, I grew and I became someone who, well, I don't know, me now, I, I love who I am. I love what I've grown into. I love what I've become since losing that dream. Because here's the thing that I want you guys to know, that even if you give up on your dream, it doesn't mean you have to stop dreaming. It doesn't mean your life is over if you just can't do that one big thing. Because the thing is, dreams can change. They can transform. They can morph into new and exciting things. There's more to life than a one-track goal. There's so many possibilities that your life can grow into. My illness sucks, yeah, but it doesn't mean I'm a failure because I couldn't achieve my one big dream. And there will be people that will say, don't give up on your dreams, never give up on your dreams. And for some people that sticks, but for me, it doesn't. And growing up with a serious mental illness, I've been forced to face my limits. And the thing is, I've learned that respecting those limits and working with them rather than constantly pushing them is the best way that I know how to live my life. And you might be wondering at this point, well, it sounds like that happened a little while ago. What happened? Since then, what, what, what's going on now? The first thing is that I'm on YouTube talking about my experiences. That's the biggest change is that instead of being quiet about my illness, I've decided to speak out about it. And shout out to you guys because you're amazing. You make this whole project worth it. But really my day job is I actually work in a lab. I'm a research technician. And I can't exactly say where I am or what I'm doing or like the specific like field I'm in, but just know that the work I'm doing is helping to build a foundation that other people can build their research off of. And hopefully at the end of that, I can help people. But when I'm not working, I'm also chasing creative dreams and aspirations. And it's kind of funny because actually losing my big dream enabled me to explore smaller dreams that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to have. To start off, I live my dream of being a cosplayer all the time. I basically build what I see in my head and then I show it off at conventions all around the country. I also live my dream of being a world traveler. So far I've been to 19 countries and I hope to make that number high in the very near future. But do I have a big dream now? Is there another big dream that's replaced the previous one? 
Well, I dream of one day making a difference in my local community and the community's perception of people with psychotic disorders. I want to work with crisis intervention teams and trainings and whatnot, and eventually I want to do public speaking about my condition and the stuff I've learned from it. And of course, I dream of continuing to build this channel and add more knowledge to it so that it can be a source of information and hope for those that are suffering and think they're alone in all of this. And of course, I have like weird little small dreams too. Like I want to learn how to spin wool into yarn and do a bunch of random crafty things. Like I learned how to marble paper once and that was like really cool. And the thing is, I can let life and circumstance get me down or I can get back up again and work with it to live my best life. So sure, I won't be a doctor, no, but my life's not over. And that doesn't mean I can't stop dreaming. I let new dreams happen all the time. I'm always making check boxes and then checking them off. And I'd like to think I'm proof that even with a serious mental disorder, you can still live a fulfilling life that includes, yeah, chasing and achieving your dreams. And the only caveat, and I cannot stress this enough, is that you have to live life on life's terms, period. But now that I've said my piece, I want to ask you guys something. If mental illness or something else took a dream from you, what did you do about it? And if you've managed to achieve your big dream, um, heck yes, congratulations. Do you have any sage advice for the rest of us? But other than that, I love you all dearly. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>